Okay, so I'm making this video on the back of a few other videos where I've had messages asking me how I set the Canon 7D Mark II up in order to capture fast action. Now, if you haven't seen any of my videos already, I primarily shoot motocross and enduro bikes, as well as dog photography, so it's all fast moving subjects. And I've come down here today to see if I can find any mountain bikers to demonstrate this, but sadly, there's no one about. But that doesn't matter, because I'm still gonna show you the, the settings that I use on the 7D Mark II to capture this type of stuff. Um, you know, let us know in the comments if you've gave this a go and did you find it helpful. But without any further ado, let's get to it. Okay, we'll start by switching the camera on. You just press your info button to get this uh, quick menu up. And we'll go through this. So for shooting action, by the way, just to get into this, you just press the Q and that's how you can access this quick menu. For shooting action, I like to freeze action around one over one two fiftieth of a second and upwards you can go anywhere. It depends what you want to, your images to look like. You can go all the way down and, you know, motion blur, but that's a different story. Freezing action, I'd say an ideal is one thousand and two hundred and fiftieth of a second. I like to leave my f-stop, my aperture, wide open on this lens because it's nice and sharp and to have whatever background separation I can get, that's what I'll take. If I had the f2.8, I'd be doing exactly the same. I have my ISO always set up to auto, and as you can see, I, I, I can change my, my settings in conjunction with using auto ISO, which is a brilliant way to shoot. This is basically manual mode with auto ISO, and I think it is really the only way to shoot action, in my opinion. You can use AV mode, but, I prefer this way. Picture profile, the picture style. I have mine set up to neutral because I shoot in RAW. And as you can see there, I've put a minus four on both the saturation and the contrast. So it makes a very washed out looking image, but on import, you've tried to retain as much detail as possible. That's the, the theory behind that anyway. I leave auto white balance on. Um, again, I shoot in RAW so I can correct this in post if needed. But the camera generally tends to do a good job on that. But you know, as I say, if you're shooting in raw, auto white balance, there's no, no difference. Um, I don't have this lighting optimizer set up. I don't think it brings anything to the table. That's off. Now, AI servo, this is continuous auto focus. This is what you need on this camera in order to make the most of it. You, you don't want it in AI focus. That's leaving the decisions up to the camera, whether it focuses once or continuous. One shot obviously just focuses the once. It's beeps when it confirms autofocus but to shoot action you want continuous autofocus which on the Canon cameras is AI servo. Now my metering mode I use evaluative metering now you know it's whatever you're used to really but I like this because it's pretty much the same across the board on all brands of cameras you know what you're getting you can learn how to manipulate the images with exposure compensation while using evaluative metering a lot better because it takes a reading of the whole scene. Single shooting I've been back and forth on this. You would think that with it being a sports camera and shooting action, that you want it on high 10 frames per second, but I find that I end up with thousands, too many images to go through. You know, you get a lot of the same type of images, not much different. So I learned a long time ago how to shoot in one shot, but compose your image, get the right time. And, and you know, nine times out of 10, I've been able to do that, but it, it took a lot of practice. And um, yeah, it's whatever you're used to on that, on that front. I shoot in RAW, I haven't got a CF card in here, I don't own one at the moment, it's just the SD card. And what I'm going to talk about now is the custom controls. So, the custom controls, go into there. Now, this is great on this Canon 7D Mark II that you have this option that you can basically customise all of the buttons on the camera, on the outside of the body. And you can see here, it highlights on the screen which button you're actually you're customising when you're going to here, so the shutter button half press. You know, this is down to each person how they want to get this set up. I've just got mine set up to metering at start. I actually use back button auto focus. As you can see here, I've got the AA lock button set up to AA lock and hold. That's a good one if you just want to have the say, if you found you a nice exposure and you want to take a multitude of images at that exposure on the ISO, then you can just lock that in, lock them settings in. Now this one, one shot, 
I've got this button here set up as you can see there that button on the front of the camera and when I press that in I'm going to press it in now I'll just refocus this press that in see there it's gone to one shot now I can switch on the fly between continuous autofocus and one shot which I think is brilliant and you get the autofocus confirmation beep when you lock on it's a really good way to do like you know on the fly from portrait to static subject to action it's great but you get the gist of this you can basically customize all of these buttons however you want them set up and you can see how I've got mine set up there if you just want to take a screen screenshot of that and apply them to yours if you if you want to but really what I would advise you to do is a lot of the time you can go in here and just set the camera up exactly how you want it for for you basically how it works best for you you know your brain works in a different way to mine so when you're moving all the buttons and dials with your fingers it's going to be different for me so you know how I've got mine set up might work for you but it might not just have a play around and um, see what you think so coming off the back of that the buttons and dials and the functions how I've got mine set up on my camera you're more than welcome to try that it might not work for you it might but I, I would say I'd advise you to try your own and just have a play around and you know find out what works for you I'm going to talk about next the case studies and again there's six different ones and depending on what you're shooting it's everyone's going to be different they might someone might be shooting just slow moving subjects so they might need a different case study some people might be shooting like really fast moving subjects that are darting all over the place really unpredictable so again it's going to differ but less waffling I'll show you what I mean okay so this is what I mean come into your menu click the menu button and use the quick button quick menu button to shift along here and come into the second menu the purple pinkish menu which is the auto focus dedicated menu and as you can see here this is what I'm talking about the different case studies and the helpful thing what Canon have done if you press the info button here when you hover over these uh, case studies it'll give you a description of what they're about and you know based on that I chose case study 2 for the type of stuff I shoot and you can read through these yourself the six of them and they're all for different type of uh, action and you can customize these now I've customized mine you can see here the original case study parameters over there in the grade arrows and, and you can see where I've maxed mine out on the white arrows I don't know if that had changed it say if I selected the first case study and I maxed it out if it'd still have the same effect as how I've done it on the on the second case study that's something I've yet to try but these parameters work really well for the type of stuff I shoot again motocross and enduro so as I've just said there there's six different case studies I'm using case study 2 for the type of stuff I shoot and you can see that I've maxed the parameters out now it's a bit of a chew on if you happen to go into that menu all the time and move things around as you're shooting different types of subjects dependent on speed you know agility how fast they move all of that type of stuff this feature what Canon have introduced on this camera I don't know how many other cameras it's in but this is a really great feature that helps me change settings on the fly when needed depending on the type of subject I'm shooting when it comes to fast action <sighs> okay so that's where we left off we're on the auto focus menu I'm going to use the quick button jump along here to the last menu as you can see here this is a customized menu this is where you can add any tab within the camera to a customized menu so I've set this up just purely for auto focus because that's what I'm most interested in with this camera and it's the stuff that I use most often this is how it'll appear when you first go into here add a menu tab yes now we configure it select items to register so as I've said you can basically put anything that you use the most inside this menu here from the camera and I'll show you again how I've got mine set up I've got the tracking sensitivity Axel D cell tracking the autofocus point auto switching AI servo first image priority and second image priority and you can configure you can add more menus item tabs to this but I've chose 
Doors 5 and very helpfully you can rename this tab. So I've renamed mine as Autofocus Adjustment. Sorry, I'll just get back into that. You can see there, Autofocus Adjustment. Yours will probably look like this, My Menu 1, when you're doing it. I've got this saved in Custom Menu 1. As you can see there on the custom dial, it's C1 on the dial. So all these settings are saved to that, that dial, the button on the dial there. So yeah, there's my settings for fast action. Give those a go, say what you think. And this, if there's anything that I didn't cover that you want to know about, leave a comment down below. I'll try and do my best to answer those questions. And if you want to see how these settings on the camera work in a real world scenario for shooting fast action, check out this video up above. I'll see you over there. And as always, thanks for watching.